Next thing down is all the Xbox stuff um, and how the living hell Phil Spencer slash Xbox's management or whatever presents themselves. Um, Josh, you don't think Phil Spencer will address any of the layoffs. Neither do I, to be honest. Um, but I wonder just what his candor is going to be because dude has nah. been radio silent since I, the um, studios were shut down. his base being nuked on for that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And him just like, yeah, getting achievements on Xbox games. <laughs> he's just, he's, he's cooking shed. in the corner. He's getting ready. I am, um, yeah, I think they will release a statement either bef- probably before the showcase mm. from Phil Spencer, I mean, whether it's text, whether it's a video, but I don't think they'll mention it in the showcase itself. Mm. I just think they'll double down on the line of, we're just focusing on the future of Xbox now. We're just focusing on the games. We don't want to take time away from the devs that are here today. I just, I don't think that's the right move. Don't get me wrong. I'm mm. not saying like this is what they should do. I just, I, I don't expect like, a moment of humanity on that level at a big showcase like this no. because it is as much for investors as it, as it is for fans. So I think they'll mention it, but on stage, I think, I don't know, man, I don't I know. I think it's a kick in the teeth if they do uh, some any, anything now. Like, he's missed his window. Yeah. I think you can try and do the whole, it's all about the games, guys. Let's just focus on that. Um, they're better off not going there now. Like, they've missed the window. They messed up. Spencer kind of just took it on the chin. Or, well, he's taken it in his direction. He hasn't really acknowledged it. Um, but I feel like you just kind of get out there, show the games, and just they're, try and get past it. They're betting now on generating hype, positivity, and excitement. Yeah. Um, but I do think it's a fatal mistake because they're, they're going to be aware of the fact that trust has been broken over all of this. Mm-hmm. Um, in regards to like the layoffs and the rumors surrounding, you know, the the PlayStation like releases and PC releases going multiple. There, there's so much uncertainty around that, and I yeah. think. I think you're probably right. They're probably going to try and brute force it by basically being, hey, look, we still got lots of games coming towards your face, brother. (laughs) But in reality, you know, there is kind of, so it's one of those long-term rot situations where, you know, anything that you're right, anything that they come out and say right now is going Mm. to feel really insincere and belated. Um, But equally, if they just, keep on going, like, here's the games. The it's still is, gonna seem completely tone deaf. I feel like this showcase, like, what they have, they have like, two paths ahead of them. It's like the, the current Xbox identity that a lot of people want them to be, which is have the exclusives, give you a reason to own a Series X or an Xbox console, that's one path. The next one is Xbox is Game Pass and cloud streaming, everything's multi-platform. Xbox is a multi-platform brand or an app that's on your TV, that's the other path whichever one of those they pick will be what dominates the showcase because mm-hmm. they're either going to come out and remind you that they have all these reasons to own an Xbox or they'll only remind you of the franchises overall um, and just say, hey, you know, because one of the rumors doing the rounds is um, that there are more games about to go across the PlayStation following Sea of Thieves, Pentiment, etc. Um, again, this comes from Windows Central's uh, Jez Corden saying that internally um, there's no red line internally on which games could come over according to various um, executives that are putting these things together. Um, and the next set of games, according to Corden's write-up, are potentially the obvious games you'd most likely expect, um, which follows rumors that Starfield's going to be going across because it's one of the biggest releases that they've had, um, alongside Hellblade 2, which yeah. as we're recording this, the reviews are out for that, the game's finally out. I still feel like there's zero marketing around it. Um, there's, I know it was coming out this month. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people did. Um, and I think that might be a game that needs to recoup its funds on a different platform. But that's interesting. And, you know, if they go down that second route of just Xbox is just a logo, it just, mean, it just means gaming overall, whatever, then you get- It's Sega! <laughs> <laughs> it could literally be that. So Sega was one of the last companies to do that, where, like, you know, you ditch the hardware and just become a publishing wing. Um, that might be the thing. And then the Xbox showcase is just a reminder of Xbox deals that mm. you can get. I think, I think going back to Phil Spencer just very briefly, mm. I think I definitely agree with you in that they're in a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. Mm-hmm. But I think they will choose the damned if you don't situation over talking about it just purely because I think even they've realized that there is no way to spin this news. You could <laughs> spin the news of Xbox games coming to PlayStation. Phil Spencer was immediately out there saying like, look, we're just dabbling in the waters. Only these games are yeah. coming to PlayStation at least imminently. But with these closures, we've seen from the Matt Booty response and we've seen from the Sarah Bond interview, like the reasons that they have been closed cannot be spun into any kind of even neutral <laughs> PR. No. And I, I, I think, I almost think Phil would be dumb to try and come out and after those two failures in communications mm-hmm. and try to convince us that it was at least an okay idea in that please trust us guys. I just don't think that would ever work. So no, I think true. they will just take the hit and go, well, people are going to talk about this one way or another. If we don't talk about it, we at least can't add any more discourse to the fire. They yeah. can only relitigate stuff that has previously been said. Let's try and move on again. Not saying that's the right move, but I think that's what they will do mm-hmm. going forward though with like, you know, 
the idea that more games are going to come to PlayStation, yeah, that Jez Corden right up to me makes it clear that I think we will get more announcements at the showcase. I do think they're going to continue to dip their toes in, and I don't think they'll get, we'll get any just announced games also announced for PlayStation, but stuff that's just dropped, Hellblade 2, uh, Starfield with its shattered space DLC, mm-hmm. they are good bets, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. You know? It'd be a weird thing if they are reminding you of, like, I guess that the whole internal thing is that they don't necessarily see PlayStation or Sony as a rival, but it would be a weird thing for an Xbox showcase to remind you of a different brand's console or something like that. But still, if their whole route forward is multi-platform, just think about Xbox regardless of where you are, then maybe they do just say coming to all platforms mm-hmm. for whatever that game is. And um, Let's talk about specific games, because that'll be the thing that turns heads um, if they do have good stuff to show off. Um, Perfect Dark has um, resurged across this year. Um, first announced, I think, back in 2020. It was one of the original games announced for the Series X. It was just a CG trailer. Um, it was a long time ago. It was alongside the Series X, um, and it showed uh, Joanna Dark standing on top of a... Um, it looked like she was in Egypt. There was some pyramids and stuff. Um, and we just never saw anything else. The assumption, or the rumors, sorry, were that for a third-person game, that it's a full reboot of the IP. There hasn't been a perfect Dark game since, like, 2004. It's been a long time. Um, and internally, um, various insiders were saying that the game is an absolute mess, that it's not coming together. Um, the Initiative is the name of the new developer that were put together to make the game. Apparently they lost a lot of key staff because they just couldn't bring this vision together for whatever this game was going to be. And then more recently, um, you had Jeff Grubb get out there um, who works for Giant Bomb and say, actually, no, it's, it's not necessarily on fire. It might actually be ready to be shown. So I'm like, that's mm. the weirdest pivot. Um, but also, like he said, you know, a lot of big AAA games don't come together till the last minute anyway. We had that with God of War in 2018. So there's a chance that it was, it's been disparate parts, disparate ideas for the last four years and surviving a pandemic to finally bring something together to show people in Xbox's hour of need when we actually need some game, some exclusive that can look impressive. I, yeah, I'm intrigued by this one because... On you the, don't think it's going to be there? No, I don't, I, I don't think it is. And I want it to be successful, don't get me wrong. Mm. I hope those initial rumours are wrong and the grub rumours are closer to the truth mm. and they have managed to pull something off with this quadruple A game. But I don't think it'll be there because... And you might disagree based on what you just said there. Mm. I, I don't think they need it at this showcase. I think they in this, for the rest of this year, maybe the first half of next year, I think they have enough games in games that we want to see more of, like their end of year for this Mm. uh, period, I think it's stacked with Indiana Jones and Avowed and more stuff that they've announced. Fable (laughs) that we've seen a few times, you know, games that are presumably very close to release. We, the Outer Worlds uh, 2 was announced. We got a Shattered Space DLC. I think they have projects that are, that are, closer to release that they'll want to push a little bit Mm. more with deep dives into gameplay specifically. So that's the only reason I can think of them putting stuff like Perfect Dark in there, especially if they've got Gears, by the way, which is another thing. Um, I'm getting... If that, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just, revving that chainsaw. We get that. I forgot about what the another big game that they had cooking, yes. but I think they will only throw Perfect Dark in there if they're trying to do what you said in, in trying to just throw everything mm. that they have internally announced at the wall in the hopes that it gets people to forget about their past couple. That's months. exactly yeah. why I think they would do it. Yeah. Also, like Hellbit 2 is finally out now, and that was another game that was announced in the same showcase as Perfect Dark. It was one of the original, hey, look, next generation of Xbox, it's Hellblade 2, and it's it's Perfect Dark. Um, if you're trying to convince a mass populace, or at least your followers, that you actually do have everything together on some level, then it's, you need to do right by the games that were initially announced, um, because something like Scalebound or whatever was always cancelled. So, um, yeah, I think, you. what do you think of the state of all this stuff? Uh, well, to be fair, I think, like, I think, I think the, <laughs> the Perfect Dark stuff is interesting to me, because it's like, oh, obviously, it's a prestige game brand but it's probably again it's one of those where it's like there's the nostalgia values like probably oh, there's been like, like multiple like, generations like, I have no idea what, I mean. what Perfect like, exactly that's what I mean it's yeah. like, I don't think I, I think I agree with you they can probably do without having it there but the longer that it goes on without being shown the more ridiculous it feels so it <laughs> probably needs to be like a sort of or is it now or never kind of thing yeah. for them in a way yeah you're right it's so uh, you don't want it to become like honestly a Hellblade 2 kind of got towards the mm. end where you start to think what the hell's going on with this game? Mm-hmm. Or I think of a uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 where you're just like, is this game real? Like, yeah. if they, if they, even if they just confirm that Perfect Dark is still real, you, you're right, it could 
be viewed as a win there. Well, it's just 100%. like the amount of conversations on, oh, we're rebooting it, we're going to reboot it in third person. Obviously, historically, it's a first person mm. franchise thing. So it's like, that's a, that's immediately interesting. Like, there were more vehicles in Perfect Dark Zero. Like, what actually what actually is the game? Yeah, we don't know what it is. Yeah, we have no idea. <laughs> Literally no clue. So it's like, that, yeah, and is it at this point, are you just clinging on to it because Perfect Dark's a cool name? And it does kind of go, ah, Final cool. Dark does go hard, to be fair. Yeah. Was, it does. Yeah. And uh, next game down is Gear 6, something that's been rumored a lot. Um, Nyon confirmed to be there, but we have no idea in regards to, I mean, with the assumptions based on story of the way the Gears 5 went but um is there do you think the the cover shooter like in the way the gears does it does that now feel a bit too outdated i'm just posing that as a question i love gears um but i'm curious not for me if it was a straight up gears 4 style cover shooter mm. i'd agree with you i'd think we'd be looking at it kind of how we look at recent halo games where right. we're like that's cool but what you haven't really innovated in the way that people. I was just say Halo Infinite is a massive step up. Oh, in terms of it's like open, more open campaign and just gameplay everything. Oh, absolutely. I mean, like more Halo Four and Halo Five mm. in Gears Four, where you kind of looked at it and you thought that's a prettier version of something I've already had. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. To me, Gears Five started to make a fundamental change with mm. the formula that I think will benefit it in the long run. I think introducing more open world elements, more player agency in the combat itself, while retaining the bombastic set pieces you want from a Gears game, to me, that's putting it on the right track to feel fresh. Mm -hmm. So I think the question for Gear 6 is, what approach is Microsoft taking? Is it going to play it safe and be like, just give the people what they think they want, which is more Gears, mm. classic cover shooting, bring us back to the Gears 2 and Gears 3 era, or are we going to try and push this into new territory and make it feel fresh and make Gears like a major, major franchise and a jewel in our crown again. I hope it's that version because Same. Gears 5 it needs I, to be I, in know, that I position it, again. Man. Like yeah. it feels weird to me that for so long Gears is like, and this goes hand in hand with Xbox's kind of like uh, cultural, uh, not devolution, <laughs> but like it's regression where it's like, okay, it doesn't matter as much, mm -hmm. but you know, Gears, Gears should be a big thing. Yeah. Gears has yeah. to be a big thing. Ge yeah, for the longest time, obviously the 360 era was Gears, Fable, Halo. Like they were the big titles, like the Gears logo was everywhere. It was very identifiable, the COG logo. Um, and then, yeah, like Gears overall, I feel like needs uh, the Halo Infinite in terms of where Halo Infinite is now, not obviously when it was at launch, but Halo Infinite now is this really great, robust multiplayer. It plays like this beautiful hybrid of, of um, Halo and then faster Twitch shooters, like obviously Call of Duty. And I feel like Gears needs to be sped up. Like I, I played through a few levels of Gears 3 um, the other week because I just randomly remembered that Gears exists. And I was playing a bit of that and obviously Gears 4 and 5 got a bit faster, but I feel like you can speed up the transitions between the cover, the, the, the mm -hmm. cover points themselves um, and, and and just move through those spaces more fluid. a bit more. Yeah, make it yeah. more fluid. And you know, you're taking on enemies in different ways. You're playing the angles game. You're um, having really good AI that, that makes you, you know, go into different areas and stuff. I just feel like it needs that step up. And um, to me, Gears Five, I just didn't. I thought all this the open world skiff stuff was like, what the hell even is this? <laughs> There's like nothing to do in between the combat areas. So I thought it was really boring. And um, if they're gonna double down on it being open world for the sake of it, I I need something to do in those areas, um, like vehicle combat, Mad Max style or something mm. like that. Um. But you and where you are on, on the old gears. Well, I mean, like I'm, I'm, I'm again as a lapsed Xbox person. It's just one of those. Well, it'd be nice in. to know that my relative's still alive. I think that's the main <laughs> thing, really. Uh, the thing that would get me in would be if it was like if it looks like it's a technical showcase for Xbox's hardware. It looks like they've got a really good meaty campaign that's full of muscles and stupidity, <laughs> and also really leaning into you know what made Gears special when it came out. You know the stuff mm. where it's like those memories that you had doing horde mode with your buddies, yeah. like the the PvP aspects as well. Really lean into that because I feel like when the, 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 the issue with Gears, the minute, just from someone who's been sat on the outside, mm. is that when I saw it doing the open world stuff, I'm like, well, everyone's doing a little bit of the open world mm. stuff right now. I need you to really lean into what makes Gears Gears while also innovating. Mm -hmm. And I think the way you do that is to make, it's kind of what Call of Duty's been doing recently in a weird way where it's like, hey, we're going back, we're reminding you why you love this series. Yeah. You know, and, and, and kind of going into it that way, not in a nostalgia play, but certainly in a case of, Gears was a big deal. Like, Let's do, get back to that state again. Yeah, do a, do something called Gears of War colon Horde and put that out on Game Pass. For, I mean, everything's on Game Pass anyway, but some sort of like widely available Horde mode thing to remind people how awesome that mode used to be. Um, but yeah, just double. No one really does. No one really does third person shooting in terms of the speed that Gears of War used to have. But cover shooters aren't really a thing at all. Yeah. Um, and it feels like you can do a lot more with that, especially online. Like you know, picking different angles off and making sure you're getting the hit and everything. Um, I feel like Gears has a lot of potential, but yeah. it is another franchise that hasn't had a hit in a 
long time. Um, also, just for the sake of being more specific about it, I hope, I mean, I like Kat as a character, but I would take the whole grizzled veteran version of this. Like, you've still got mm. the original characters in there, Coltrane, Marcus Phoenix, etc. Like, do them, make them the main characters. Like, at the end of Gears 4, when they come back, it's the best bit of the whole story. And it's like, there's they that chem group chemistry is so awesome. Yeah. And it's like, I drastically prefer that and the jokes between this, but John DiMaggio as Marcus, like all that stuff, you, I think you can do a, we're too old for this S type stuff with those characters. I think, yeah, I, I, I definitely see that. For me, they've been doing that with Gears 4 and 5, just from a realm that isn't playable. Mm. Like to me, I like I like Marcus so much more as a supporting I figure yeah, I true, don't yeah. control rather than like the main character. I just want him in the think, story. Like, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think they've got to going forward. I love Marcus's role in that second game. I think there's so much gra- like I did not know I would ever be caring emotionally about Marcus Phoenix. And by the time <laughs> I finished PS5, I was like <laughs> Oh my god. Marcus turns oh out god. that big burly dudes hugging each other. That's a big deal. Absolutely. Marcus Phoenix hugging his son. Massive deal. Absolutely. Love it. Honestly, man, I know. Dudes I, rock. I, yeah. Dudes rock. I, I know I've talked about this to death in these podcasts, but what they do with JD in the second game to transform a bland AF protagonist from Gears 4 into someone like really interesting and in, trying and struggling and in, failing yeah, to live up to the gears all identity of these different dimensions both on a character level and a meta level like if they can pull that off i just hope whatever elixir they had whatever chemical oh, uh, concoction they had in that studio oh, has not ran out i hope mm. they managed to retain that alchemy going forward because that was yes, magic three good words thank there. you I was elixir really concoction and alchemy please, that is a, that is a, that's a full oh. score that's a full uh-huh. score there yeah. <laughs> yeah I feel like um, a lot of this I mean we'll move on from Gears but I feel like a lot of the, the story cards they played in 5 were some of the only remaining story threads that were left over from 2 and 3 so um, where we're at now I wouldn't be surprised if you just call it Gears of War again and then mm-hmm. you just go forward I mean you've still got obviously there's cat stuff like Gears 5 ends on a, a cliffhanger there are more things to do but not in as big of a deal as what was the deal with Queen Mirror which everyone was asking back in 2007 or like it's been a long time generations have moved on <laughs> like you wow them with the gameplay and the lore stuff comes second um, but then it's just up against whether you call it Gears 6 or one not. quick one just before yes. you move on I do think what Ewan said is right that Gears even if it's not had the same cultural impact and might not have hit the same quality every time you see a Gears game announced at an Xbox showcase it's the best looking game at mm. that showcase I think Gears oh they do have Unreal 5, 5 to show off yeah yep, Gears 5 with its weather effects looked incredible the updated version of that for the Xbox Series X mm. and Xbox One X back in the day unreal I do think in terms of pure head turning wowness when it comes to <laughs> graphics um, I think Gears still delivers there oh. in a way that Halo arguably doesn't. No, that's, I mean, that yeah, true. I think like something like that storm showcase in Gears 5, if you show trailer wise, you show some insane storm, some insane level and go, hey, by the way, that's a Gears game and you're going to have a firefight in the middle of that, yeah. then um, that's something that'll be really, really cool. Next game down is Fable, and this was initially announced in July 2020. There was an in engine updated trailer in June last year, um, which feels like forever ago since we saw that. Um, but Fable feels like another game that is just beyond being announced, being showcased. Like, give us proper gameplay. I liked that trailer last year, uh, the Richard Ayoade one. Um, I thought the tone was pretty spot on. Like, obviously, you need to try and change some things. Lionhead are long gone. Peter Molyneux's not heading up the franchise anymore. Um, they've given it to um, the dudes Playground, Playground who make Forza Horizon, which, when that leaked, was an interesting conversation. Like, kind of racing game dev do this. Um, we still don't really know, but in terms of presentation, it felt pretty spot on. Um, but it just feels like Fable is another um, IP that has goodwill around it. Uh, Fable 3 didn't kill it altogether. Um, <laughs> Um, it was Microsoft who killed Fable Legends, even though that thing was near enough ready to be released. That is um, the most released. baffling cancellation of all I know, it was actually playable mad. at showcases and everything. Um, but yeah, Fable overall, thoughts on this? I'm, I love Fable 1 and 2, especially 2. I liked those games. Mm. Fable 3 was the most infuriating game experience that I had <laughs> yeah, in my youth. That, that thing at the end, it's like, everything you did doesn't matter. <laughs> Austerity. I'm like, please <laughs> shut up. That thing we have to walk through the menu as oh, well. Like, what are we doing, Peter? God, this no, is so horrible. I this is one of those where I'm like, I, I have no skin in this game anymore because I don't have an Xbox. However, <laughs> it would be nice to see Fable moving forward as a unique fantasy IP. It's great that the uh, Forza guys are on this. I think because even though it's a mm. racing thing, it's like, well, obviously Fable is uniquely uniquely British, isn't it? Uh, so we we <laughs> need to see that that personality come through. Obviously, even though I don't really like Richard Ayoade, that quirkiness came through in the trailer last mm. year. So 
Yeah, I, I want to see it. I want it to be good. I want it to be unique. I want it to obviously not promise the world and deliver yeah. you like a really, like, I don't know, like a pie with a fingernail in it or something. I feel like if Final Fantasy 16 has taught us anything, it's the regional uh, United Kingdom accents are hilarious and should be in more video games. <laughs> Shout out to Final Fantasy 16's Village of Geordies. What do you think of uh, Fable, Josh Brown? Um, I have, similar to you, and have always liked Fable, but I've never been a Fable guy. Mm. And that's not for lack of trust. I want to be a fable guy. So honestly, while I lament the demise of Lionhead, gutted still that they were shut down, mm. I, I'm hoping that with a new studio and with Playground Games, like you said, you know, this um, strange team to choose, but perhaps that could pay off in the long run. I just want this to be the game that gets me in. Similarly, the trailer, I thought it looked cool. Mm. Um, it wasn't 100% blown away with it, but liked it a lot, and hopefully... This will be the, you know, the reboot that makes me finally a Fable guy. That's all I want because well, I think Microsoft, to its credit, I mean, it's bought most of these studios, but yeah. now in the first party space, it has so many beloved RPGs and Sony has like action RPGs, but core RPGs, mm -hmm. that's Microsoft's almost bread and butter at this point. So hopefully they double down on that aspect um, with Fable as well and keep it true to its roots. Mm -hmm. Speaking of RPGs, um, you noted down the idea of the Oblivion and Fallout remasters. These are things, I forget where they initially leaked. There was some huge internal document, maybe that Nvidia leak a while ago. Um, but the idea of a Fallout 3 remaster and an Oblivion remaster, they've been talked about quite a lot across the last few years. Um, and just something that, again, if you want to turn heads, you want to get good, you want to curry favor with an audience, hey, by the way, these things are real. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison and it's going to be on Game Pass later in the year, if not released that day. I'm not going to lie to you. Fallout, the Fallout remasters I put on here purely is me trying to manifest it happening. <laughs> the They're going to be there, not necessarily, but with the show being a huge success and with it spiking sales, like we talked about on the PlayStation section of mm -hmm. this podcast, um, I, I imagine even if it's not in development, they might do like a Final Fantasy VII sort of situation where they're like, right, we're just going to do it. We're going to just <laughs> say it's happening and then we're going to You're going to hold us later. to account. We're saying yeah. we're going to yeah. do it. It's like the me people want it. the ironing. It's like, yeah. I'm going to say that I'm going to do it. I'm going to leave it on the chair of ill refute and I will get to that ironing at some point <laughs> exactly, in the week. Exactly, exactly. It's like, right, we've only got a logo. We've only got intent. We don't know who's doing it, <laughs> but they're happening. We know you want it. It's finally happening. That's what I hope. I think the Oblivion remake is more realistic that has been rumored for so long mm. and it does seem like that's going to be a full on remake. I'm an Oblivion guy. I love that game to death. <laughs> I want that in my bones. So weird to think of I Oblivion in a non-cursed way. Though obviously, <laughs> I'm not saying cursed is bad, but like yeah. the, the vibes yeah. that game are so like, oh my god, you that's know what it, I mean? It's like, like the Troll you, 2 of Elder Scrolls. Yeah. How do you do Oblivion without keeping that sort of jank cursedness to it. I don't know. <laughs> it was a beautiful time. I feel like that was one of the um, the most beautiful Xbox 360 memories. That game's 18 years old now. Oh. Just to uh, that was, I throw know, that in. This is going to age me, but because I didn't play RPGs on PS1 or PS2, Oblivion introduced me to RPGs. Like, oh. I didn't really know what one was until then. <laughs> um, and I was I was young for the Xbox 360. I would have been like, what, 13 when that That's a beautiful experience to have, though. So it was, I remember reading in a magazine when Mass Effect was announced that it was going to be a game that took you 24 hours. And I was like, 24 hours for a game? I've never. It's unheard <laughs> of. Have, have, are you guys seeing this? Are you guys seeing this? What? Final Fantasy? Never heard of it. I was going to say, Mass whereas Effect. I played like Final Fantasy VII throughout my entire high school. Yeah, it's yeah. just, it takes a long time. And um, the last thing down is the idea of the, the, what's the what are they going to end on? I mean, they could open on this, but that idea of the big showstopper, is that just a new Call of Duty? Do they do right by the fact that they've bought the studio, they've bought the IP, the franchise stuff? Um, there are already conversations on how Call of Duty is going to be on Game Pass. They've already mentioned that's going to happen. Um, but the current conversation is splitting Game Pass tiers, having some sort of pricing model change, maybe some sort of um, different version of Call of Duty that gets put on Game Pass, kind of like how you get different versions of COD on mobile. There's a specific version of Call of Duty available in China, things like that. Uh, maybe there's a version of COD that they siphon off to entice people to buy the full package or however the hell they're going to try and maintain the monetization of it because they're getting away from unit sales and um, by putting something on Game Pass. Um, so it's a bit of a split there in terms of the talking points. We've got the idea of a whole new Call of Duty. Is that where it gets announced? Um, and that idea of how you make Call of Duty work on Game Pass. Do For me, I want them to just announce all previous Call of Duties are now on Game Pass. Yeah. That would be the most easy home run yeah. ever. That's like the thing that you, that, that, that's such a no brainer. Especially you think with, so? like, with, 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 the, with obviously this being Treyarch again, if you just literally are like, there's Black Ops quad, uh, quad, Quintilogy. What yeah. do you even call a five piece? Quint oh, yeah. 
it's, it's, uh, the Black Ops box set, we'll yes. call it. And the it's deluxe out there edition. And you can play it right now. Mm -hmm. Even the fourth one, which you all thought sucked, but it's there for you to play anyway. <laughs> That'll clog the hell out of their top 10 trending metric for the rest yeah. of their time. Um, but yeah, that idea of just having the archive available, again, is something that Nintendo do all the time. I love that idea. Give me Black Ops 2 popular again. That would be awesome. I think we see maybe like the title and a quick teaser trailer at the Xbox mm. showcase itself, but I reckon they might save all that stuff for the big COD deep dive that's coming afterwards and maybe end on something like Gears. That mm. said, I do think they're going to go hard in that COD Direct yep. about announcing stuff like it, you know, coming to Game Pass or the backwards compatibility of the previous games, them coming to Game Pass, turning the servers back on and cleaning them up like they did <laughs> um, a few months ago. I think all of that... Yeah, I think that will definitely happen. I think, I think we'll get updates on sorry, no, updates yeah. on Warzone as well. Mm. Um, there's been rumors since last year that Verdansk, which was the first Warzone map and still the most beloved, that's coming back. I think it's another easy win to mm. throw that in alongside the new release and get people excited. So I think I think they've got a lot of announcements up there, Salee, for that COD Direct, more so than just, here's the next one. I think they tease something at the end that segues into that stream, and you do some yeah. big head-turning thing. They're bringing back the orange branding for Xbox Live. <laughs> as well, oh, as well, That's put, put the is. blades back on, yeah. why not? Yeah. But do something like, you know, I think they announced the new Call of Duty, or if they're gonna do that, do the logo thing, and like, stay tuned for a deep dive. That's how you get that audience to um, to go across. COD thoughts, Mr. Ewan? I'm intrigued by this one. Mm. I'm not, I've kind of, I played Call of, uh, the last Call of Duty I played was uh, Black Ops, Cold War, because it was a free PlayStation Ooh. Plus game. Uh, and that one was like a weird, like 80s action, Tony Scott-esque throwback. Uh, I enjoyed the campaign, even though it was basically a hodgepodge of like, uh, you remember Black Ops and here's a bit of Mason stuff, but also we're gonna do our own thing, but then also not. But uh, I, the track Call of Duty games have always been the ones that are most interesting to me. Like World at War is my favorite Call of Duty game. And I like the Black Ops uh, trilogy well yeah. enough. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do in an early 90s setting. This is what I've been begging uh, from all my military FPSs for years mm -hmm. now is that, uh, commit to the bit. If you're choosing a setting, please goddamn commit to the bit because I can't be asked. <laughs> you're gonna set it in the Gulf War. Don't give me ridiculous hollow sights, laser sights, mufflers, rails, anything. Like just commit to the bit. If you're gonna depict warfare, you can't have your cake and eat in two. You need to make sure that this actually feels, it makes sense to the time. And obviously that contravenes literally everything that Call of Duty has been doing for the past like <laughs> 10 years or whatever. But there is a way to do it. And Black I would, Ops I would, Cold War was a notably bad one where it's like, it here's was, some laser sights and everything. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like yeah. Yeah, a bunch of stuff that they didn't use in the 80s with, with the sci-fi excuse for here. I kind of just, I need them to, I need, I feel like people at the minute with the way that, that Call of Duty is, like if you're gonna keep everything in the modern warfare space, eventually people are gonna get sick of having the same bonuses, attachments and everything. I mean, yeah. I'm already sick of it. The reason why people dislike Call of Duty Vanguard is that you could like, people were crying out for a bit of historical <laughs> authenticity with the multiplayer. So I would hope that if they're gonna do this, Commit to the bid, <laughs> that's please. An, that's an interesting talking point because like, Call of Duty's got away from me. Like, every time, every now and then, I'll see something. And I don't know if it's a meme or not. Where it's like <laughs> Nicki Minaj is in there. I saw some Gundam stuff the other day, yeah. yep. and it's like uh, Godzilla and Kong are in yep. there. Yep. Like uh, that's not what I'm there for at all. And I, I assume that makes a lot of money. I know they're doing it because that's what Fortnite does. How many brand deals can we do? And the kids seem to like them, so why not? But as you play the most Call of Duty out of all of us, yeah. Like, what do you think their identity is, and how like, do they bring that across into the main installments? Like, that's the. Thing. Thing. I would love them to commit to the bit. I think the only bit they commit to now is money. <laughs> I think with the just like plethora of those crossover skins in mm. Warzone, I just those will come to this next game. Like, do you see? Do you see a lot of them populated? Does it feel like the oh, audience yeah. responds to that? Oh, right. So like, yeah, it is. It is Fortnite. Then. Admittedly, it could just be the algorithmic thing and the nefarious thing that Activision does, where it's like putting you with players with skins, mm. so, it makes so you'll want to buy them. Yeah. But it, I mean, they sell well. They would not do them to this extent. Mm. I've idea, right? Yeah, to make this more palatable, if the game is set during the Gulf War, so early 90s, yeah. you get skins of early 90s celebrities and late 80s action Better. heroes. That would work. That would make sense to me. Uh -huh. give, give, give me like, give, give me a fresh Prince of Bel Air <laughs> skin or something. <laughs> give, give me like, like early, obviously they, they have uh, Johnny Diehard, John McClane yeah. in, in, in Warzone or whatever, but commit yeah. to the, if you're going to do that, if you're going to make it a little bit more cheesy, commit to the 80s machismo of it all. Like give me like Jack Slater from Last Action Hero mm. to play as or something like that. Like just commit 
relate to some kind of bit that makes sense in the context of the game that you're making, and it's not making Call of Duty this nebulous platform where everything's just going on. It, oh, I hate this. It really it gets my blood up. It's it so true. Like the thing is, right? I agree with you so much, Andy. And, and yet, yes, <laughs> the Nicki Minaj skin rules. And I bought the Ash Williams skin. And when I was playing as Rick Grimes, I was like, maybe this is the best game ever. We are oh, no. Uh, maybe this is absolute the Walking rules. Dead. How much was that? The Walking Dead is back. The How much was that, mate? The Rick Grimes was just the price of a battle pass. The um, Ash Williams one was maybe sixteen ninety nine. And he has a go at me for pre-ordering Assassin's Creed Shadows. Oh, that's a big difference. I can cancel that one. Two hundred and fifty bones and playing. I've not paid it yet, mate. <laughs> my, my boy Ash and here and Bruce, here and Bruce Campbell, like just phone it in in the most funniest way. The point is, go on. That I think to start with. Gulf War could commit to the bit, but by season one or two, <laughs> those war zones are going to get the war zone yeah. shakes. <laughs> the, it, it, like Call of Duty is, like you said, it's a platform now. They prioritize having all of their experienced experiences linked that mm. the fact that progression can go from one game to the next the fact that your skins if you buy them in warzone you can use them in the newest game mm. like that's what they're doubling down on and that's annoyingly what's making them the most money and although we can sit on here and say what the hell is call of duty's identity those meme skins become memes and become popular i cannot explain how many Nicki minajes are in the game in <sighs> multiplayer like when that thing dropped in people realized that it was funny the people who thought it was funny <laughs> tragically outweighed the people who were like i want this to be milsim and milsim only and it's like and i'm, and I'm uh, I, I yeah i don't care anymore but I just, I just realized that it's got away from me like the only thing i want from call of duty is the ability to install the damn thing i would like to be able to just have the multiplayer installed so i can play some death matches whatever it is and i can't do that because the amount of optional packs you need to do with they're all 140 gig plus 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 very insidious you literally log on the first thing it bombards you with it's like would you like to buy yeah and it's like <laughs> I, I just want a version of card that i can just have installed without having to wipe out the rest of my hard drive and that's my main thing but overall yeah it's very interesting seeing where everything is at the amount of money spent um 70 billion dollars um to get call of duty on xbox like you would assume that now they start going this is why we've done it i reckon as well um you know you were talking there about Something we've been talking. It sounds so like long. Long. Yeah. Um, something about like the crossover appeal and putting it on Game Pass, getting the backwards compatibility um, announced. I think they will finally, <laughs> much to the chagrin of you, and um, announce. Xbox crossover skins. I think we'll get Doom Guy in Warzone. Ooh. I think we'll get a Fallout. Um, obviously, not a specific character, perhaps, but they might tie it in with the Brotherhood TV show. Steel guy or something. But we're definitely getting a Brotherhood mm. of Steel armor. We're definitely getting that vault jumpsuit. We're getting right. that Xbox brand synergy. I think sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Probably with the release of the next game. Maybe not launch, but in season one and season two, I reckon we're going to start seeing that stuff now that the deal has been finalized and they can just make that an easy thing. Maybe even make them Game Pass exclusive. If you play the next <laughs> Call of Duty. On Game Pass, you get this free Vault Boy skin. He's a senior skin. Guy. He's a yeah. senior. I'd buy the senior skin, Scott. I really would.